What the hell? <laughs> Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 20th episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 225th episode overall, titled Stitch Witchery. We start this episode at Angel Grove High, where Ashley is working on a jacket in a class. Some girl tells her that the jacket looks great, but she actually means the plaid one that Ashley's wearing. Then Cassie comes in. Girl, weren't you going to Stone Canyon? I guess she ended up moving to Angel Grove instead. She asks how things are going, and Ashley says that she's worried that she's lost her sense of fashion. She shows an image to Cassie, and she's just confused as to what is fashion versus terrible. Cassie takes her away for a break. Then out of a coffee cup comes the periscope. At the beach, remember Invisible Bulk and Skull? Yeah, I completely forgot too. They start eating food out of people's picnic baskets, freaking people out as they drink their sodas. The family runs away and Bulk and Skull run around celebrating being invisible. Cassie and Ashley are walking through the park and Ashley laments that people like the jacket that she's wearing because she actually made it in 8th grade and she thinks it's kind of tacky. Wait, then why are you wearing it? Then Cassie agrees with her, saying that people are probably just saying that they like it because they don't want to hurt her feelings. Mm, Cassie might be a little bit too real. They come up to a hot dog stand to get a couple of drinks. Then a limo pulls up next to them and a fashionable woman gets out, running over to Ashley. She's very impressed with Ashley's jacket. Ashley lies about how she just made it in design class, even though she just said she made it in 8th grade. I guess it could be 8th grade design class. This woman is named Delisha and Evil, a fashion diva. She wants to buy the design. She asks if she wants to be a part of the fashion world, and Ashley just says, I'm in design class. This is her version of, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> Delisha leaves getting back in the limo. In there, she meets with Diva Talks. Diva Talks wants everyone in Angel Grove fighting to wear one of those jackets, and then Delisha and Evil turns into a monster. Well then. In a warehouse of some sort, the Piranatrons are dancing, making the jackets, coating them with anger potion. Divatox is there with Delisha and Elgar, celebrating. I missed Elgar. Then his chocolate bar gets put into the potion to make the jackets especially irresistible. At the beach boardwalk, Bulk is wrapped up in bandages doing magic tricks for tips. He unwraps himself, revealing that he is faceless. Some stupid kid calls it fake, walking away with his own money, and then he gets picked up by Invisible Skull, freaking the kid out. He runs away, passing Justin, Carlos, TJ, and Cassie. They see that clothes are on sale that everyone are fighting over, and they go over to get in on the craze. They're all different colored versions of Ashley's jacket design. Cassie puts one on, and she starts screaming at some lady. And TJ has one on, too, yelling at people. Justin then has one on, getting ice cream on Cassie's jacket, and Cassie tries to douse him in water, but then she gets TJ instead. So angry. Underwater, Deep Talk talks about how they'll be so busy being angry, they won't even notice when she goes after the gems of the museum. Uh, Deep Talks, where's your bomb? Elgar, Rygog, and the Piranatrons appear around the receiving area of the museum, and Elgar puts on a pirate hat, getting ready to plunder some booty. Ashley walks into the power chamber, asking Alpha where the others are at. Alpha says that they won't respond, and they see on the viewing globe that everyone is arguing. Ashley says that she'll go see what's going on, but Alpha says no, she has to go to the museum. Ashley says, alone? Because, yeah, this is her first outing as a ranger, isn't it? Shift in the turbo. Yellow shows up with Elgar and the others at the museum, and she starts fighting off the Piranatrons, flipping them out of the way, but then she gets hit down. She contacts Alpha, asking for help. Alpha says that she's still on her own. She goes over to pull the chains to close the door, but she can't do it. Then she gets Elgar to cut it, closing the door. Ashley then runs away, since they're distracted. She shows up by the others, asking why they didn't come to help her, but then they just end up telling her how all her jackets are garbage and how terrible she is. Ashley runs away crying. I mean, they're clearly under a spell, but she gets a pass because she's been a ranger for like, what, a day? Deep Talk sees this laughing, and then she sees that the Blue Centurion is in town, and she realizes that if he gets a jacket on, she'll have really one. She screams for Elgar, who ends up showing up by the jacket, somehow pushing the kiosk down a hill. It's heading right toward a woman who is standing on the corner, and the Blue Centurion comes running in, saving her. She reveals her face to show that she's actually Delicia's human form. She asks how she can repay him, and he takes the jacket off the rack, putting it on the Blue Centurion as a thank you. Also, it has a little Blue Centurion insignia on it already. Then Blue Centurion loses it, saying how he's done enough for these ingrates, so he deserves this. Then Delisha points out some guy in a jacket who stepped outside the crosswalk, and Blue Centurion goes to go beat him up. Ashley is crying by herself in the park, and Alpha calls her, asking if she's okay. Ashley says she'll handle the Blue Centurion. She shows up near him, and she immediately tells him to take off that jacket. He fires his gun at her, and she asks Alpha where the others are at. She shows up asking them to give them back her jackets and she claims that they paid double. She also says that Cassie's is the wrong size and that Justin has a girl's jacket on. And they all take off their jackets, tossing them at Ashley. They immediately say how they feel like they just woke up and Ashley is so happy to see them. She says that they have to hurry because the Blue Centurion's in trouble. They show up to find him firing at random things. They need to handle this. Chips in a turbo! The Rangers show up on all sides of the Blue Centurion dropping down. Delisha is watching this happen, but before the Rangers can do anything, the Blue Centurion calls out Robo Racer. He gets in, converting into battle mode right away. The Rangers call out their Turbo Zords, forming the Turbo Megazord. The two robots start punching each other a bit until a giant rocket with a giant jacket comes flying in, putting a giant jacket on the Blue Centurion's Robo Racer. 
It's on the robot now and the rangers need to try to get it off of him and actually regrets ever making these jackets. TJ has an idea though and he tells the others to hold it steady. So he jumps into the robo racer pulling the blue centurion's power pack. He also sees Delisha on the ground. He takes the jacket off of a knocked out blue centurion and TJ leaves. Then blue centurion, now back to normal, removes the giant jacket from his zord. Demon Dogs is pissed so she fires the torpedoes making Delisha an evil giant. She immediately starts attacking them with giant bits of fabric and then she even tangles up the robo racer. TJ says they need to end this so Justin uses Megazord blaster mode firing at her. Then so does the robo racer hitting her again. Finally, the Turbo Megazord does its spin-out attack, killing Delisha and Evil once and for all. At the Youth Center, everyone explains that no one really liked her jackets. And TJ points out, well, neither did she, and Ashley agrees, saying that if something is too good to be true, it probably is. Stone then walks by, delivering food to two kids doing homework. Then their food starts floating in the air and their milkshake starts disappearing. Then Bulkin School's bodies reappear, still in their chimp attire, which is a great touch. They think that they're actually still invisible, though, eating the food, and the kid takes his milkshake, pouring it out on Bulk's head, leaving. Stone comes over so excited to see Bulk and Skull talking about how great it is to see them. Bulk says that they were just monkeying around. <sighs> the end. So wait, does Stone just assume those monkeys evaporated or something? At least we have Bulk and Skull back to normal again, which I'm very happy about. The monkeys were really grating. Overall, this episode's so stupid, but it's like the right type of stupid. I don't know, something about this episode really endeared me to the whole new cast because there's like no pandering to how Justin is in child. Instead, they just treat him like another member of the team. I really liked this episode a whole lot because it was silly, but it had some real feelings in there. Like how Ashley got her feelings hurt by everyone telling her that her work sucked. I don't know, I just, I liked it a lot. Other than that, I'm actually excited to see what the rest of the season could be. It's pretty clear that this show needed a new set of writers to elevate the show a bit. And I'm excited to see that we're at a point that I can hopefully enjoy from now on. Until next time, may the power protect you.